Today we start speaking about Python, and, but before doing that, we're speaking about programming for MEI, some motivation behind the, cho the choice of Python and something like that. So why an MEI system need programming? Why we choose Python? And what feature your software should have? Uh, let's start from the um, definition of ambient intelligence that uh, Professor Korn already showed you last uh, time. An ambient intelligence system is a digital environment that support people in their daily activities, in their daily lives, in two ways, proactively and sensibly. And so these are the two key words for an ambient intelligence system. A system that acts on the environment and support people, with the main goal of supporting people in their daily lives, and in two ways, proactively and with sensible features. How we reach this goal? We reach this goal by blending systems of various types and devices in the environment, in a specific environment that you will choose in your project. And then we need to add some software, some software applications or software component in the system to coordinate the blending of this system and this device in this, for these different component to make them behave like a single organism and not different part that uh, happens to be in the same place in the same uh, um, setting. In designing this coordination system, uh, we need to pay attention that this system should be interactive, supportive, and sensible, like in the definition of ambient intelligence. So the goal of this software is, yeah, the one that I already said before, coordinate the various project components, be they, be they some de uh, devices, hardware devices, or other more complex system, and make them uh, interactive, supportive, and sensible. And we add some requirement on this software that also impact uh, how we choose Python as uh, the, um, the programming language for this course. That is, uh, software and Python should focus on features. Uh, this software should effectively tackle intelligence design, sh should enable you to create a smart system easily, we can say. Uh, the software and Python should be able to solve a real problem, so not mathematical abstraction or something like that, but a real problem user needs, and uh, should limit, avoid uh, programming uh, idiosyncrasies like, for example, pointers or something like that to allow uh, you that uh, not everyone are from computer science allow people not from computer science to easily uh, get into the course and start working. So Python uh, respect these uh, settings of uh, the set of uh, requirement is born for solving a real problem as uh, apparently as a move learning curve, curve and uh, it avoid focusing on mathematical abstraction only. If needed, they are there, but we can try to skip it. And uh, Python also limits distraction from uh, low-level syntax issues, compilation, and counterintuitive concept, like, uh, again, pointers or something like that. So uh, Python is uh, an easy-to-learn, powerful programming language, and is an ideal language for scripting and rapid prototyping of application, like uh, what you will do in this uh, course and is useful in many areas of application from rapid prototyping to data science to mathematics to statistics and so on and it's available on most platform windows linux mac os uh, um, embedded system and so on python obviously as a website that is uh, python.org um, python was designed by guido van rossum in the 1991 is a general purpose 11 language with a great emphasis on code readability and conciseness. Python is easy to re read, as you will see uh, briefly after. And currently, two versions of Python exist, Python 2, that is the legacy version, and Python 3, that is, we can say, the newer version. We will use this year for this course, Python 3, so please pay attention when you install it or use it on your computer that you are effectively using Python 3 and not Python 2. So 
one question um, is, I, I said that Python is a high-level programming language, and I also said that uh, Python avoid problem, we can say issue with compilation. So the question is, what's the difference between high-level and low-level programming language and uh, interpreted versus compiled language? So let's start from high-level language. High-level language are near to human-level abstraction, so they are typically short, expressive, and easy to read. They are portable, in meaning that they can be executed on different platforms with few or no changes, but they need to be translated into low-level code for the actual execution. An example of a level language is, well, Python, but also C, Java, and so on, and this is the hello world in C that you all should know. So it's brief, it's concise, sort of, and it's quite readable. A low-level language, instead, is directly executable, so no needed for any translation, translation in, uh, on your computer. It's typically more efficient because low-level languages are designed for very specific hardware, for very specific uh, platform. However, they are platform dependent, so they must be rewritten entirely or partially for execution on different platforms. And they are also difficult to write and to read since they are nearer to machine code. An example of a low-level language is assembly. And this is the, we can say, equivalent of the hello world in C, but realized in assembly. So as you notice, it's incredibly more difficult to write and also to read to understand what this program performs. Instead, interpreted versus compiled language, an interpreted language is a programming language that perform a line-by-line -line translation and execution. So you have your source code here. You have your source code and something that is an interpreter, they take one line of the source code at time and translate in a lower level language, we can say, and execute the, the program line by line. Python is interpreted. To use Python, you, you, to use a Python program, you should have a source code program in, in Python, in a text file, and the interpreter that is the Python program that you will install on your computer. You always need Python installed on your computer and the source code, we can say, of the program to be executed to have some uh, result. A compiled language, instead, is completely translated into level-level code before the execution. So you have always a source code in some places. This source code is compiled in an object executable file, and then you, have, you act on this object executable file, so you can take this executable file and move on different platforms and just execute that without having the C compiler or the source code available on the programming language on each computer that you execute the program. Now, on the other side, an interpreter language uh, works on any computer. So if you have a Python program and the Python interpreter that you write a program on Windows and then move the source code and install a proper interpreter on Linux or on Mac OS, you should, you should be able to uh, execute the same program and obtain the same result from the program. Uh, in a compiled language instead, if you have uh, an, ob uh, an executable object here that is, for example, an X file on Windows, it should work on most of the Windows uh, operating system, but you need to redo everything, all the steps here, to have the equivalent executable file for macOS and uh, Linux or what else. So this is the main differences. Python is interpreted while instead C or C is uh, compiled as a language. Just to, just to add. Python is interpreted so that uh, it has two modes of execution. The first one, this one, is the script mode, that is the, we can say, traditional mode in which you are, um, typically, you develop software. So you write the code in a text file that, in this case, has a specific extension that is .py, and then use the interpreter 
to execute its content, like you did in C to, to compile the program. Mm -hmm. So this is, we can say, the traditional mode. We, we use it a lot. And then, since it's interpreted, we have also the interactive mode. The interactive mode is a special mode that is a possible, since Python is interpreted, that uh, you can start Python on your computer and type the program one line for per li one line for line, and see the result immediately on your screen. The interpreted mode, just to to check on Windows, for example, is available on the command prompt on Linux or macOS in, in the terminal. You type Python, and it starts. It prints something like the version of Python in the beginning. And then you can type a Python program. So for example, if I type one plus one, it give incredibly two. And uh, uh, we have the result of this operation, this Python that perform the evaluation one plus one and perform the, the computation and give us the result two. And this is line by line execution. Hmm? Okay. So how to install and use Python. We will use again Python 3 that is available for the major platform. We will use in Ladispe on Monday uh, Python under Linux. Under Linux, it typically pre installed Python. Uh, if it's not pre installed, it's available through normal package managers like uh, apt get, uh, yum, yast, uh, whatever. Uh, to check if it's installed, type, you have to type Python 3 in a terminal, so open a terminal and type a Python 3. If uh, it started an interactive way mode, so the Python 3 interpreter is installed. Please notice that on Linux, typically, you have both Python 2 and Python 3. So if you type Python, you have uh, the interpreter for Python version 2, while to use Python 3, you have to type explicitly Python 3 in that way. This is also important because uh, since we are using uh, Linux uh, in, uh, in Ladispe, um, you have to check that we are using the right version of, Linux, of uh, Python. So in our environment, development environment, you have to check if you are using Python 3 or Python 2 since uh, they are both installed and the operating system should use one as the default. On Windows and MacOS, uh, Instead, Python 3 should be explicitly installed. On MacOS, there is already available Python 2, but not Python 3. So on Windows, uh, the installation is trivial, is usual. Uh, go on the Python website, download the, the installer. That is a next file. Double click on it, uh, next, 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 uh, and finish. And Python is installed. Then to check if Python is installed, open a command prompt, like I did before and type Python minus minus version. So if it's installed, Python minus minus version will give you the number of version of Python in this way, Python 3.6.0. On macOS, you should do the same thing if you want. Check the latest version on the Python website, download the PKG installer, double click on it, next, 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 uh, finish, and you should have Python 3 installed. Alternatively, you can use Onbrew with the command brew install Python 3. If you know what is Onbrew, use it. It's better than the, the package installer. Uh, otherwise, you can download it from the website. Again, to check if it's, uh, Python is available, you have to open a terminal and type this time Python 3 minus minus version. Because as I said before, on macOS and on uh, Linux, Python is already installed in the version number two. So to differentiate the, and is used for the operating system, uh, so to differentiate between the two versions, you have a Python normal uh, file that is the Python 2 version and the Python 3 that is instead the Python 3 version. Then in this course, we are using an integrated development environment that is a software application that provides facilities to developers for realizing software. Uh, an integrated development environment, you already uh, encountered this in your life, we can say. Uh, Codeblocks is one of that. Eclipse is another one of that that you should have used. And uh, an IDE, an integrated development environment, normally consists of a source code editor, 
a, file, a text editor, some build automation tools to run the program, see the output, and, and so on, and a debugger. And uh, moreover, most modern IDE offer intelligent code completion feature. So you start typing a function, uh, something in a programming language, and it suggests you how to complete that function. We will use, uh, as IDE, we will use JetBrains PyCharm in the professional edition. In Python, there are few uh, choices as an IDE. One is this uh, JetBrains PyCharm, the other is Eclipse in, in a Python version. Um, PyCharm is a commercial product, so typically you have to pay for it. You can download it from the jetbrains.com slash PyCharm website. But JetBrains provides you with a free license for students, teachers, and people in the academic world and the university. So you have to go on this website and apply for a free license with your studenti.polito.it email address so that you will have one year of free usage of every JetBrains product. So just to, to say, you can go here. And uh, and go on apply now. And uh, university email address. You have to select your status. You are a student or a teacher. In this way, you are a student. Your name, first name, and second name, and your email address. Uh, typically, in the format S, some number, your ID. At student studenti .polito .it. If you then press apply for a free products, JetBrains will send you an email to set up a, a, a user account and with a username that is your email address and a password that you will choose to use for free PyCharm and any other JetBrains product. This is important to do before the first lab because you will need this account to use the PyCharm um, application installed on the Ladispe computer. So do it before the first lab, please. And then in the lab, you will open PyCharm and insert your email address and your password that you choose, and you will access in this way to the PyCharm application. So how to install PyCharm on Ladispe will be already installed. You, are, you only have to uh, log in with this uh, um, free JetBrains uh, license account that you that I already show you and then you have to download the PyCharm Professional Edition from the JetBrains uh, um, website. Please notice that there are two versions. One is the professional version and the other one is the community version. You have to download the professional edition, not the community, um, since it's more complete. And the PyCharm is available for Windows, Linux and Mac OS. On uh, Linux, you have to extract uh, the compressed file and put it where you want to install the, um, the application. On Windows, you have to do double click on the downloaded file and then next, 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 finish, and it will install it in the program file folder. While on macOS, it is a DMG file, so you have to take the application and move it in the application folder and is uh, installed without any other step. So. Then you can open PyCharm and insert your JetBrains credential, and then PyCharm looks like this one. So now we will see this before moving to, to, the, to Python. So I open PyCharm. So he asked me for a license. I want to activate the product, not evaluate for free, and I activating the license with a JetBrains account. So I put here my personal um, information, my email, and the password. I press OK, and if I type everything correctly, it opens PyCharm. PyCharm opens with this screen you have to, in which you can create a new project, open a project, or check out a project from version control, but we will see version control later on this course. So we can create a project. We want to create a pure Python project. There are several other choices 
uh, for mainly for the web, but we want to create right now a pure Python project. So here we can set up a location. It, for now, it's okay, the default one for me, and then we have to choose the interpreter. In this way, I only have the 3.6 interpreter installed. On Linux, so you should have more than one interpreter here, so please choose the 3.6 interpreter, especially on the uh, Ladisto computer, because there, there are two interpreters, and typically, by charm, we will use the version two of Python. So, select the interpreter, press create, is thinking a little bit. Then here it creates a folder that is entitled with the same title of the project you selected. Currently is uh, entitled one. In this folder there is nothing. So we need to create a Python project, a Python file. So right click on this new Python file. And then we can type a name of our, our first Python uh, file, I will call it first, it will create a first.py file and here it opens a text editor in which you can uh, digit your Python uh, program. And we will see in a moment what we can digit here. So let's move to Python basics. In this remaining of this hour and the half, in the next lecture, we will cover, we can say, the fundamentals of Python, everything that you should know and be able to use to uh, create some pro Python program. So from the beginning up to the com more complex, we can say data structure. So let's start again from the hello world in C. So you, you know that is the hello world in C. This is the minimum program. We, we are we computer scientists. We are we love the, the hello world uh, programs uh, that are the programs, minimum programs in a programming language that allow you to print on screen hello world typically or some text. So this is the minimum program in C to uh, print, uh, to create an hello world program. So you have, as you know, just to, to arc up, the first line that is uh, an include of the standard input output library. This is mandatory, we can say in C, every time you need to get an input or provide an output of something, like in this case, we want to print on the screen hello world. Then there is the main function, that is the starting function of a um, C program. Then you have this function that is called with these two braces, that contains the body of the function. And then you have two lines, two, two other statement. The first one is printf hello world, that is the line that effectively print on your screen hello world, the sentence hello world. Then we have a um, then we have the return uh, zero, that the return the, the number zero as an indication to have a um, correct uh, um, execution of the program. So if we run this program in C, it will be compiled and then we'll print on our screen, hello world, and nothing else. The Python equivalent is this one. So more readable, more concise, no include of standard input output or whatever, no braces. And we should notice at least three things. The first one is that we don't have anything at the end of the line. While here we have something at the end of the line, here we don't have anything. An instruction in Python terminates with a new line. Then we can also notice that we have no include of standard input library, input output library. In Python, the standard input output library is included by default. And then we can also notice that we have no main. In Python, there is not a main function. There is something similar that we will see uh, later on, but it's not mandatory 
for a Python program to be executed to have a, Python, um, a main function. You can type print hello world and it prints hello world on your screen. So we can also try this. So here we can type print hello world and then we can press run double click on first.py run first and here it'll print in the, in the console will print hello world so this is the minimum we can say hello world program that we can write in Python So let's start to add something to this world. The first thing that we can add is a comment. In Python, in line comment, start with a hash symbol, and you can put a comment in one line with this hash symbol. So in this case, I will comment my print hello world uh, function with this will print hello world uh, comment. Then Python has some keywords that are a reserved word that you can use in your program, but you cannot redefine during your program. This keyword you, you should notice something similar, like something uh, that you already know, like the while keyword, uh, the um, return keyword here, the for keyword, uh, the break keyword, if, uh, and many other keywords that you already are familiar with from other programming language, and something new that we will see um, today and next time. So Python obviously has variables as a way to store temporary um, some content. Variables in Python are written in this way. You have a variable and a variable name equal something you want to put in a variable. So this is uh, a string, a set of charter we can say right now, and we want to put the string Python inside the variable language name. Notice also that by convention, in Python, uh, variables with, um, composed by multiple words are joined with an underscore. So there is the first word, underscore the second word. No minus, not the, um, string, not capital letter, all lower letter separated by, uh, joined by an underscore. And you should also notice here that differently from what you are accustomed in um, C or in other programming language, there is no type here. You don't say that language name is a char of 10 or is a string. You say language name equal Python. This is because Python is dynamically typed. So you try to understand what is the type of the of the content that you put in your variable. So in this case, Python should understand that this Python string is a string. If we put hit here a number, it should understand that in that variable, in that variable store a number. Obviously, you cannot, as you imagine, you can, you can store in a variable strings, like we see before, this one, but also string written in this other way not with double quotes, but with single quotes, they are equivalent, an equivalent way to write strings in Python. You can put integer inside, like this one, and you can also put Boolean values inside a variable, hmm? true or false. Python will try to infer the proper type of a variable. So in this way, in, in this case, we, it will, it will um, show you that this is a string, this is a string, this is an integer, and this is the boolean. But you can also ask Python what is the type he inferred to check if it's correct or to perform some any other operation. And you can check this with the type function. So let's see what does this by function, play function. So let me open here another project that you have on GitHub. So, 
let's open this one. So what are doing this one? We have four cases. The first case, we have a variable that we named variable, and we put a string that is the, our hello world inside it, and then we print the type of that variable. It should print something like string, hopefully. And then we want to print the variable. So we're expecting that it will print hello world. In the second case, this one, we have a variable in which we store one, two, three, four. And we want to print the type of that variable and it should print integer. And then we want to print the variable. So we would like, we will see one, two, three, four in our uh, console. In the third case, we can, for example, put one dot two three in the variable, and then we, we can again print the type. It should be something like float, and then we want to print the variable, and we are expected that uh, to see one dot two three, a floating point number that we set in the variable. The first case, it's more particular. This is particular for Python. We have a variable that sums, it's similar to a number, that is 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So similar to before, but we have a 0 at the beginning and uh, the O letter uh, as a second, uh, we can say in second position. And then we want to print the type of this variable. And it should be, I don't know, probably int, because it's not a string. It uh, doesn't have a double quotes or single quotes. And then it prints the variable. And so if it, if, it, if it goes like before, it would print 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's check this one. Let's run this. So we can see that first case, the type is string, yes, and the variable is a low word. Perfect. Second case, the variable is of type int, perfect, and uh, the print is one, two, three, four. Again, perfect. In the third case is one dot, um, the, the type is float, yes, because it's not an integer number, it's a floating point number, and it will print uh, one, dot, one dot two, three. In the third case, uh, it prints that is an integer, yes, uh, we can trust it, but then it prints six, six, eight, why it prints 668? Because this way of uh, um, writing tell Python that the number here are to be interpreted as octal number. So 668 is the representation of that octal number in base 10. So this is an octal number in Python and then print will print it as a base 10 number, just a particular thing. Back to strings. So I said before that strings can be written with starting and closing with double quotes or, or single quotes, like in this example. If I run this example, I'm expecting that the first sentence go well obviously, because there is a double quote, I am a string, and then another double quote that close the, the string. And in the second case, if I run it, Python will say something similar to syntax error, embedded syntax. Why? Because here we have a string that starts with a single quote. So Python say, okay, here a string starts, and the string finish with another single quote. So this is a letter, Perfect, and this is another single quote. So here the string finish for Python, and then we have something else that is not a string according to Python, and Python doesn't know what it is, because after a closing string you don't have anything. You should have some other particular operator to be um, to work correctly. So this is an invalid syntax, because yes. You, you have a string that starts here and finish here, and then you have something else after. How we can avoid this problem? Well, first of all, 
we can use double quote instead of single quote. This is the first basic solution. The other way is to use some escape sequence. So you can use in this way an escape sequence. Let's say, dear Python, this is the first quote that starts the string. This is a letter, and this string is escaped. So please consider it as part of the text and not as part of your programming language. So it's not a termination of a string, but it's an effective quote in the text. They are equivalent, we can say. Choose what you want. And most importantly, in strings, please choose one of the two representations. They are equivalent in Python, but please try to choose if you want to use the double quotes or the single quotes, and then in your application, dot mix, your program dot mix the two type of quotes. Choose the double quotes or the single quote and stick with it for your, in, for your entire application to, to in, increase the readability, the readiness of your program. Python allows you to create a string that span for multiple lines, and string that span for multiple lines started and ends with a triple double quote or a triple single quotes. So you can have a triple double quotes and then you can type something, uh, press returns, try, uh, type something else, and then complete the uh, sentence that span on two lines. And same here, you have a triple single quote, you have a, sen a sentence, return another center, return another sentence, and then another three single quote. Again, as before, they are, um, they, you can use both of them in Python, they are equivalent, but again, choose one of them and stick with it. Now, let's speak about a first, uh, we can say, control element of our application. Hmm? That is the if statement. So, first of all, you, you may notice how, from this example, how is composed the if statement. There is the if keyword, there is a condition here, there is two points that end the condition, and then there is the body, we can say, of this if statement, that in this case is a print. So, no braces, in Python, we will not use braces for statement and for, uh, for if statement, loops, and function. But Python uses indentation to understand what is the body of a function, what is the body of a uh, if statement, what is the body of a loop. So by convention in Python, um, the, um, the indentation is by four, char four spaces. In PyCharm, PyCharm is set up so that if, if you press the tab key on the, your keyword, it will move automatically of four spaces. So if you have here an if, four spaces, the body of the if. If inside here you have another if, we can say here, you have again other four spaces on the right and your other statement. So what does this program? This program create two variables, people equal 20 and cats equal 30, and say if people is minor than cats, then print we are doomed. Then it will execute if people and is major than cats, then prints we are safe. So in this case, if we run this program, we have 20 people and 30 cats. So the program ar arrives here and say if 20 is minus 30, that is true, so it will print so we are doomed. Then the program try to execute this one and say if 20 is major than 30, that is false, then it skip the content of this if and terminate because no other instructions are present in this program. A way to have these uh, two if statement more concise and to avoid uh, having the, the evaluation of both this line and this line. So if it's this true, why we need to evaluate this other thing? We can try to put it together with the else if keyword that in Python is called elif. It loses the S and the E character. So this is, we can say, the equivalent, except for the last part, that say if people is minor than cats, print we are doomed as before. 
else if people is major than cats, print we are safe. In any other cases, that in this case is when people is equal to cats, print we can decide. So in this way, in this particular case, when people is 20 and cats and 30, if we say, if we execute this program, the Python interpreter will consider this line, say that this is true, print we are doomed, and since the first one is true, it skip everything else in this uh, structure and continue the program from here. Here we don't have anything, so the program will not continue. In Python, we have also comparator and booleans that you can imagine. So in this case, we have some um, operation that we want to know if they are true or false. So in the first case, uh, as you imagine, two is not equal to one, so it's a false, it's interpreted as false by Python. In the second case, a string with content string is equal to another string with content string, so it's true, no matter if this is a single quote or a double quote, they are two equal strings, so this is true in Python. Not false is true. True equal equal one and true is by Boolean logic false, and true equal equal one or true is instead true by Boolean logic. So in Python you have the comparator, like in any other language, you have a not, you have an and, and or written in this way. And they give you, when evaluated, um, true or false. Obviously, we have a string, so we can print a single charter of a string. So here we can see another um, structure that is the for loop. Notice how is composed this for loop. There is the for keyword, then there is something, again, two points, and indentation, the body of this for, uh, this for um, structure. This for structure say for a variable in something else, do something. Notice that it is readable. In plain English, you will say for each charter in the hello string, print the single charter. And it is really similar to this one. And please notice also that this is the only for structure that is available uh, in Python. So you don't have for the, for those of you that know the C programming language, something similar for i equal zero, i minor, a number, i plus plus. In Python, you don't have that structure. The only thing that you have is this for structure, for something in something else. That in this way, in this case, we can use it with for printing the single charter of the string. So for each charter that is a variable, in the yellow string, print the charter. And the output is that prints the first, var the first charter, this is the H, then in a new line, the E, in a new line, the L, and so on. We can print a singular charter in a string by accessing to the, with their index. So in this way, for example, we are accessing the index number one of the string. So as you should know, this is the index number zero, this is the index number one, index number, one, index number two, and so on. We start counting by zero here. So the index number one, it will print the content of this variable in the index number one, it will print the E letter. So we can access, read, the content of a string. And if we write this one, we have a string that is hello, and we put it in a variable that is called say hello, and then we want to print the type of that string, sorry, the type of the, the, third, the charter taken from the string, the same chart that we get before, we notice that the type is not charter or char, as we may expect it, but is string. There is no charter in Python. A charter is a string. It's a string of length one with only one 
letter inside, but is a string. There is no concept of charter. The minimum uh, entity to work with uh, letters and, well, strings, charter, and so on, is the string. Strings can be combined in several ways in Python. For example, we have here two variables. The first one is language name Python, and the second is version, that is 3.6.0. Both of them are strings. And we want to uh, put it together, combine the strings, so we can perform this operation of addition. We can take the first variable plus the second variable. The output of this is that Python concatenate the string. So it will take the content of the first variable and immediately after put the content of the second variable. These also work in print, in the print function. You can also concatenate string in this way in the print. Notice that in print you have to add spaces if you want to separate the different words, like in this case. In this case is my space plus the concatenation of another string that is name. The con plus concatenation, uh, we, we see before that we can perform operation like one plus one as number, it works. We can perform operation like string, we can say plus another strings and it works. We can not, don't perform um, operation like a string plus a number. They are two different types we cannot put together, a string and a number with the plus operator in this, in this exactly way. Another way to combine py uh, strings in Python is by repetition. We can have a string, like in this way Python, and we put it in a variable that is language name, and then we can create a new variable that is a lot of Python, in which we, take, we would like to take the language name and multiply by three. So we want to repeat Python three times. So the, the output of this operation is that this variable will contain Python, Python, Python. How many Python? The number written here. And it is the repetition operator in Python. Obviously, as before, you can multiply a number per a number, and different different from before, you can multiply a string for a number. So the string is repeated the number of times written here. So just to let's check that it worked for real, I can say that is uh, uh, hello multiply five. It will print hello, 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 hello. Five times hello. And then we can also check that, uh, for example, hello plus three doesn't work because the first one is a string and the second one is an integer and Python is not able in this way to s perform an addition between a string and an integer number. You can also build a more complex string. So for example, this is another operator. We have two variables. We can say in this case is a that is equal to three and b that is equal to five. And we want to print on our screen three times five is 15. So we can create a print in this way. Print a, that is the first variable, comma times comma b comma is comma the multiplication operation that is a multiply b. This will give you print so a equal three b equal five print a times b this will print three times five Notice two things. The first one is that the A number and the B number are properly converted in strings. So it doesn't give the error here, the same error that here. And the second thing that we can notice is that this com operator concatenates a string and adds spaces every time it's present. 
So it's A space times space the other variable B. This, however, works only with print. You cannot concatenate string in this way outside of a print statement, uh, print function, sorry. So if we want to uh, concatenate string, we already know that the plus operator is a viable alternative, but we already know that we cannot concatenate a string with a number. And here we have a string that is time and that is his and a number. This is three, this is four, this, is, this will be 15. So this will give you an error on supported operand types or something like we see before, we saw before, um, the second operator should be a number, should be a string or whatever. To skip this problem, you can use the str function. The str function takes an operator, uh, um, sorry, a, um, a type, a variable or a, um, or a value, and try to convert it in a string. So if you pass an integer to the str operator, you will see the string converted in, uh, the, sorry, the number converted in a string. So in this case, this operation works because the a number is converted in a string, and then we can perform a concatenation between two strings. Again, a equal three, if we print the a variable is three, notice how it's written on the, on the console, if we print variable equal str a, and then we print variable, notice that the three number now adds a, as a, a single quote before and after, since uh, meaning that this is uh, this has been converted in a string. It's not anymore an integer, but it's a string. Exists the opposite operator that is called int. If you type int and then you put here a number as a string, it will convert the, the string in an integer. Obviously, if you type int of hello, it will try to convert the string in integer, but it will say, I don't understand what is hello in base 10, so you cannot, I cannot convert it in an integer. So int convert types from predefined like string uh, types into integer. A string performs the opposite operation. String converts something into a string. It works with integer number, but it also works with floating point number or something like that. Another way to uh, concatenate string is by interpolation. This is much more similar to what you already know by previous programming language course. And this is performed by specifier. So here we have this, the same operation before, we want to put the result of three times five is 15 inside a variable, and then maybe we want to print the variable or perform any other operation after with this variable. So with the specifier, we can say that is a, the first specifier where the D stands for an integer, a reference to an integer, because at this first specifier times the second specifier is another specifier. All these specifiers are integers, from the D uh, letter, and they are linked to this other structure here. So what happens here is that you have the first element of this structure that is put, we can say, here in the first position, the second element that is put in the second position, and the multiplication operation that is put in the third position. In Python, we have three specifier. The first one that we see here is able to format numbers. The second one, S, is for strings. So putting strings in this way in um, um, a variable. And the third one, that is R, is to raw representation. So it put in a variable the raw representation of uh, a variable. 
that is the raw representation for example for a string is this one so single quote something another single quote this is the raw representation of a string so if you use the s um, specifier in this case you see three without entry is a string obviously you see only three without a single quote if you use the raw representation you see single quote three single quote the representation as seen by the python interpreter uh, on github you, you should find an example of this now i don't have a time to, to to show you maybe next time and this is this last thing that I say is a parenthesis with something in behind with separated by commas is another data structure, another structure that is available in Python that is called a tuple. A tuple is a, uh, we can say, set of elements separated by a comma. It's a simple structure that is used mainly in this operation. Not only, but mainly in this operation. Then, Another, another way of uh, uh, concatenating, interpolating string is this one. This is a more modern, we can say, way, it's a new format, a new way of doing a string interpolation. And you have a couple of braces, another word, a couple of braces, another word, and a couple of braces. Then you have, at the end of the string, the format function. So you have a string dot format and something in the parentheses. So in this way, it will take the first argument of the format function and we'll put it in the first couple of braces. Then the second parameter, we'll put it in the second uh, couple of braces. And the third parameter, we'll put it in the third couple of braces. Please notice that this is equivalent. You can also write uh, here this thing, zero, one, and two. Without any information, it goes in the, we can say, ordinal order. So the first element is put here, the second element is put here, and the third element is put here. This is equivalent in which you are saying that here you want the first element, here you want the second element, and here you want the third element. With this structure, more interesting, is that you can also doing something like that, like this. You can put here, for example, one, you can put here, for example, zero, and you can put here, for example, two. So you can change in your in string interpolation the order of the operator of the format string. So maybe because you want to, to, to write five times three is 15, and not three times five is 15. So you can specify a number that is the index inside, we can say the, the equivalent of the index inside of the format function. Mm? This is a new way of doing string interpolation in Python. It is quite preferred with respect to the previous two. So let's speak again about string and we can say about charter. I, I create a variable that is say hello and I put it inside the, I would like to put it inside the hello world, but I, I type helco instead of a hello. So I would like to say, okay, I, I know that I can access by index to this uh, string, so I would like to replace the third charter, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, this one, the K charter with the L letter. So I can, can fix the string. If I perform this operation, Python say something like type error. Because, because strings in Python are immutable. You cannot change a string once defined. You can redefine the string, but not change any element of the string once defined the string. So for example, in our case, we need to, um, if we are doing this in the um, in interactive mode in the terminal, we can, for example, redefine the entire variable. If you're, you're writing uh, in a PyCharm editor, you can go up and correct the error before the execution, for example. But please remind that string are not changeable. Once defined, you cannot modify that string. You can copy the string, you can split, and then have a copy of the split string, but you cannot modify the string you defined. 
then there are many other operations with string. And I will show you one thing that you will be required to do several times this course, not with Python, maybe, but with other um, uh, libraries, with other um, things in your project, that is, have a look to the documentation. So let's have a look to the Python documentation to um, consider what other they are their operation with string. So the Python documentation is available in docs.python.org where you have something like tutorials, library reference, language reference, so, and so on. So we open the library reference. You sh should see here, for example, a certain point text sequence type, str. And here you have a brief explanation not a brief, an explanation of the string objects in Python. So they say that you can use single quote, double quote, and triple quote to use, uh, to create a string in Python, single line, multiple line, and it's written here. And then here you have the string function that we already encountered. And then if you go down, for example, you have the capitalize function that given a string, a return a copy of the string, because the string is immutable, with the first charter capitalized. So if we write hello and call the capitalized method, we have hello with the capital H at the beginning. And then we have a many other function, case fold function, center, count, encode, and so on. And sweet that return true if the string terminates with a specific set of, uh, with a specific substring, otherwise return false, and so on. So this is documentation. Let that this documentation, this the format function that we see for string interpolation, and so on. So this is documentation, love the documentation, open frequently the documentation, because it should be your friend in, the, in this course. And we also have, uh, this is the library reference, there is also the language reference in which they explain the operator, the data model, the execution model of Python, more, we can say, low-level uh, stuff, and then some tutorial, how to use the interpreter, the interactive mode, and so on. So, a reference point for the documentation. There may be, okay, a reference model for the documentation. So the message is, documentation exists, we cannot cover by time and by choice everything in class. So sometimes we'll give you pointers to existing documentation, look at the documentation. Last thing that we will do today, and then we can stop, is how to get input in Python. So for example, we want to ask the user how old he or she is. So we can print on our screen how old are you, and then we want to wait for the, the response of the, of the user and memorize this response in a variable that is called, for example, age, and then print you are this number years old. So to wait this operation from the user, you can use the input function. Notice that input accepts something from, the, com from the, the user and put it in a variable, and this variable will be a string. And you know that this is a string because yes, it's, it's written here, but also because here we perform a concatenation with this variable without using the str um, function. So we are concatenating three strings and it works perfectly. If we want instead to get a number of and other types of um, information from this input, we need, we need to explicitly cast the output of input. So for example, if I want age to be a number, I can write int, open parenthesis, input, close parenthesis. In this way, age will contain an integer number and not a string anymore. There is a, a way to put things uh, in a more complex, more concise way, that is insert, if you want, the question inside the input function. So instead of writing print how old are you, you can move that question, how old are you, inside the argument of input. 
So this is equivalent once uh, executed to this one. Hmm? So instead of writing print something, input, here you have input with the question that you want. Hmm? This is equivalent uh, with, um, with the, other, mm, the other way. You skip, we can say, one line, you avoid to using print one more time. So we can stop here. Next time we will see uh, more complex data structure and we go on. Thank you.